us for Sunday worship service with Faith Temple and Cog, in Warsaw, Virginia. Our pastor is Bishop Forrest Nance Jr. Join us on Zoom every Sunday at 11 a.m. on the go on your favorite streaming platforms, available on Spotify, Apple, Google, YouTube, Anchor, Overcast, Spreaker, Good Pods, Radio Public, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Podbean, CastBox, Podyssey, and many more. Online giving through Givelify.com. Type in Faith Temple and Cog to donate. Like and subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram, Thread, and Twitter pages at FTNFCOG and our YouTube page at youtube.com slash at FTNFCOG. For more information about Faith Temple National Fellowship Churches of God, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. And then good evening, all the right. We truly thank God for all of y'all being having the mindset to be here. Amen. Uh, we're gonna open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for what you're doing, and thank you, Lord, that you kept us all through this day. Lord, we just ask you now let the Holy Spirit have his way in the Bible study. Lord, as we open up your word, Father, you give us clear understanding. Give us revelation, Lord, what you're saying in your word. And let our minds be renewed with that word, Father. Oh, God, we just want to know what your will is. We want to live your will. Father, we want to be obedient to your word. Ah, oh, God, teach, touch, touch right now those that, are, that don't have a clear understanding, God, so that they have an understanding. And, Father, God, we just ask you, Lord, to bless, and bless our apostle, uh, Grant, and uh, all the Presbyterian board and all the pastors of Napa, Father God, that we find the direction that you want us to go in and we will go, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know it's cold outside. Thank God. I have. <laughs> Heat a roof over my head and heat in my house. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We truly give God all the glory and all the praise. As you uh you know, on the first Sunday, I uh, came out of Amos, the third chapter, and I actually look over Amos and uh, compare what you're reading in Amos to what's happening in, in this uh, world today. Uh, and, uh, you know, I found the verse many similarities in it. Uh, what Amos was preaching about, and I pretty can find it all through the old, old Testament and the New Testament, uh, what things are happening now. Anybody have anything that they uh, have questions about Amos? No questions. Did y'all look at it? Okay. <laughs> look at the first chapter and say, oh, that's Amos. Go, 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 go. <laughs> all right. All right. I, Amos was a just a simple farmer. Uh, he just uh, wasn't a prophet. I told you that uh, the first Sunday. Hey, man, he was just a uh, person that God used at that time to uh, get his word out and talk about judgment coming. This Amos was written around about 750 uh, years before Christ, B.C., and when I found out that when I looked at his name meant Amos and his name meant burden bearer. So he was a simple farmer named Amos back 750 years before Christ came that God used to proclaim uh, his judgment on the Northern kingdom. Uh, he, uh, his purpose of the whole book was to talk about uh, judgment on the righteous as well as the unrighteous. So uh, when we see that, and I may think about that, and how we have the same thing now in our society now. They they had turned away from God. They were seeking riches and luxury, wanted to live a uh, luxurious life, uh, didn't want to hear anything the prophets were saying, uh, uh, didn't believe in uh, that God was doing anything. Uh, or was going to judge him anymore. Uh, they even got, he used metaphors in the book of Amos about how God's uh, mercy
mercy was compared to overlap, overloading the cart. In other words, this cart was over full, uh, wagon rather, was over full with uh, straw. And how that was in comparison, how God was showing much mercy, God was showing to the northern uh, ditch tribe. Amen. So in that same similarity, we can see that today in our society today, nobody wants to hear anything about God how the false doctrines are all around uh, and how people just have seeking riches and seeking their own uh, pleasures rather than helping or trying to help anybody else. So Amos was told to go out to do it and tell them the judgment was coming. Tell them uh, that God was unpleased, but God had mercy and he was going to have mercy again. But he, he wanted them to make sure the world knows that judgment was coming. In the same sense today, we've been tasked the same thing. Jesus told in the New Testament, told his disciples, go out, tell them, teach, preach, and tell them about the coming, the second coming of Jesus. And how the world has supposed to love one another, how the world is going to have faith in God. How merciful this God we had served is, uh, how he was going to uh, uh, um, fix things if you turn your life to him. How do you can have an abundant life? But you must turn to God to have that abundant life. And so he even tells us in the scripture that daughters were going to turn against their mothers, sons against the fathers. Everybody was just going to go their own way. They had no... Uh, uh, no uh, love for one another, no unity. And we find that here today, saints, uh, people don't want to help nobody. People have, uh, uh, we have a, a point in, in a time where people will say and do anything that they want. Uh, There's nothing wrong with uh, homosexuality. There's nothing wrong with killing. There's nothing wrong with stealing. There's nothing wrong with all those Sin, we have now got a custom to do that's the way of life. Um, people get hijacked when our first plan when the hijack came out, people being hijacked, and it was a big thing. Now, people hijack is just secondary news. People get murdered was a big thing, mass shootings was a big thing, but nowadays it's just uh, somebody else got another mass shooting, and we go on. Uh, we 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 it's become numb to our society and the things that are around us. And what Amos would challenge us to do was to wake up the people. And what our challenge to do is, and our challenge to the society today is to wake up and tell them God is still in control. God still is going to come back and judge this society that we live in. And it's our it's our responsibility to let them know something about Jesus Christ, Say that he sent his only begotten son to die to redeem us back to him, to save us from sin and the, uh, the penalty of sin. That's what we have to do. But people don't want to hear that. And just as they didn't want to hear that name, they made a mockery out of Amos. Uh, they wanted the, the, the prophets that were preaching, uh, that were telling, they said that don't believe nothing Amos was saying and they're saying the same thing to now. We're just lonely people. Got one mission that's to tell them God loves them and he's coming back. Amen. And he's going to judge the righteous as well as the unrighteous. And we have that responsibility to ignore what they're saying and know what God is calling us to do. And do that. Uh, we can't get caught up into this world. We can't get caught up into this one doing that. Well, I'm going to go do this. Uh, they have the, they have more, they got all this stuff, and all I got is this over here. You can't compare your life to that life of the world. Because if you do, then you set your you know, set your affections on the world and not of God. And God tells us set our affections above. Don't worry about the things of the world. And that's what we have to do, saints. <laughs> and Amos is a prayer in the Old Testament where they were doing the thing. We can put, we drop Amos, took him out of that and put him in our 
society today, the same message that he was saying back then is the same message that we have today. And we have to, we have to be obedient because he's judging the righteous and the unrighteous, the just and the unjust. We will not get away. Everybody's going to be held accountable. Everybody is being held accountable. So we have to, we have to do better in doing what we send to serving God. You know, I just, I, I, what I want to do and see what God's will is for us to do those things. Amen. Anybody have any, they want to add about Amos or the, like I said earlier, did they have questions about anything in Amos? I guess nobody had anything. All right. All right. Yeah, in the book of Amos, I want to see if anybody knew that the book of Amos had, was where the plumb line was. So, you hear us talking about the plumb line. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me go. Nothing else. I'm going to move on to uh, to what I've talked about. And I hope we have an in-depth in depth study of the Holy Spirit. I don't move from Amos to the Holy Spirit, saints. I feel that the Holy Spirit is something crucial to keep us during this time. Do anybody know can say say what the Holy Spirit was or is, and how He can help us, or what is the Holy Spirit to them? Anybody? Nobody. All right. All right. Open up the scriptures, saints. Let's go to John, the fourteenth chapter, and the sixteenth verse. Book down to 26, 14, 16. And this is Jesus talking now. And I pray to Father, and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seemeth him not, because it seeth him not, Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see, ye see, ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he that that is he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou would manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our bold in it with him. He that loveth me not keep he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said. What does that say about the Holy Spirit? He shall be your comforter. He will teach you. He will lead you to all truth. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is, uh, is not just a spirit is a person. It's a part of what we call the uh, deity of God. We often hear the, in the Bible, they talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, in our 
doctrine we say that that's called the triune God. Amen. So it's the three gods. Amen. Make up one because they all are one. Three and all three are one. So the, the Holy Spirit is part of that deity. And he has a specific job to do. Uh, we can see that in Genesis in the, the creation of the world. Genesis the first. Oh, that was says, let us. Amen. Let's see, let it be done. The earth was all void. And it just said the spirit moved over upon it. Yeah, you know, now I know what I'm talking about. I'm turn to it so I can read it to you. I don't want y'all. In, in the beginning, Genesis, the first chapter, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Separate from God. Amen. But his Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. See, Holy Spirit had a different job. Then uh, God did something, guys. The spirit of God moved upon the face of earth. The void earth was there, no form and no void. And God said, let, and let it be. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. So when Jesus over here and John is telling us the comfort is going to come, he's talking about the same spirit that was with God in creation. Hallelujah. And he said, the same spirit now is going to lead and guide you. Once he leaves, then the comforter will come. And this comforter will teach you, guide you to all truth, whatever the word of God says. It's going to teach you about God. That's why it's imperative that the, a believer get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And, and it's so imperative that we do that. Uh, it's uh, like I said, uh, Sunday, I wasn't, uh, as I was coming up, I never heard of the Holy Spirit except for in songs uh, uh, they sang, but I never knew that there was such a separation between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so I learned this after I got older, uh, this Holy, the Holy Spirit is a real identity of God. And you said, well, if it's a, a spirit, I don't want you looking at it as a spirit. This spirit of God can dwell on the inside of us. That's what Jesus said. It will come and dwell. It will come in a book. It will be there with you. So people will already get scared when you hear it. No, oh, the spirit gonna get on the inside of me. Yeah, no, it's the spirit of God that's biding there for one purpose: to teach you, give you power to overcome, give you power to be true to God, to serve God. That's why He did. It's nothing evil about the Holy Spirit. It's for one purpose, and that is to lead and guide you and comfort us uh, to all truth. Uh, uh, one more, I want to give you another reference of a scripture. Uh, go look at, uh, mm, let's look at, uh, I don't want to flip y'all too much, but I want to get y'all caught. Uh, let's go to Romans 8 chapter, because Romans 8 chapter got a lot in there. Romans 8 chapter, it's got a lot in, in uh, about uh, the spirit life. Romans 8 chapter. Jesus came on the scene. Jesus is gone. He's ascending to heaven. Paul is writing to the church of Rome. And that's what we're looking in the book of Rome. Now he's talking to believers now. Talking about the spiritual life. The spiritual life. The 8th chapter. Now, once you get saved, 
uh, and delivered from sin, there's a difference between the filling of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I guess I better address that first. The filling of the Holy Spirit is just a filling. Uh, the Spirit came upon uh, people uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, John, I use John the Baptist. He was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mama's womb. When before he was born, he was filled in Elizabeth's womb. Amen. And uh, so he said he was filled, but he would never got baptized. Uh, being filled, you can do the work God called you to do. You can do you you can do because the spirit the spirit of God comes upon you. The spirit of God is the work wants to use you at that time. There's a filling because the people the apostles were uh, filled in the beginning while Jesus was here, and they didn't get baptized until in the book of Acts once Jesus had left. Uh, we have instances where they were filled, they're filled, uh, um, but not baptized. Uh, David was filled, but he wasn't baptized. The, the baptism could not take place until after Jesus got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Everybody before that time weren't baptized in the Spirit. God's Spirit moved upon them. God's Spirit used them, and God used them to do what he wanted. So you can be filled but then you suffer difference when you get baptized. I always picture the, uh, somebody gave me this illustration a long time ago about being filled, a glass full of water is full and the glass can run over. It's just full, overrunning, amen. You still feel if you sit there long enough that water will evaporate and go lower than that, amen. So then you had to refill it. But when you be baptized, that means submerged in water. That means you're covered all about with water, nothing around you but water. And that's how I would look at how you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're submerged into the Holy Spirit, and all you have is the Holy Spirit. Your desire, your will, everything about you changes because you want to seek to do what God would have you because that's all that you know. All you have is the Spirit of God all around you. So uh, there's a difference between the filling and the baptism. That's why uh, the people are drifting away uh, from the, the baptism because uh, we we, we hearing the word of God. To be baptized means you got to seek God. You got to turn for God. You got to seek God's face. When you get filled, uh, God can, I, I, I get a feeling, amen. You, you, God's spirit can be filled. You can be filled when you get saved. You're not baptized. You just filled. God can use you to do something. You just feel. Baptism means you gotta seek God constantly until like, we called it back in the when I came through. We had to tarry. We had, you know, went on Thursday nights. We tarry for the Holy Ghost. We, all we did was came in, got on our knees, and prayed, seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When you find through the New Testament, you read people were seeking God. They wanted God. They sought God. And God, uh, Peter said Peter one place. And Peter got there and they talked to him. And after talk, Peter prayed with him, they all were baptized in the Holy Ghost. So you're going to have to, the baptism is different from a feeling. Baptism, you got to seek God. You got to desire God. You got to have your heart and mind on focus on God. Amen. The baptism is different than a filling. Once you get saved, you get saved, you open the door. Amen. So God can give you power. Uh, Mr. Lancaster always tell me, and I was doing I was studying the day, I thought about him, and he said, I, I never like to lose. <laughs> and, and, and I said, you know, I was thinking about that. Because uh Cause we're fighting a fight now. We're fighting a war now, and uh, I don't, I don't want to win the fight this battle, and then I end up on losing. And so the Spirit just told me, you can't lose when you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. When you learn about the Holy Spirit, you can't lose because that Holy Spirit is there. The God, the Spirit of God, 
is there on the inside of you. So anything that the enemy come against you, God fights that battle. God gives you a way to take the, the show how to be victorious. He tells us in his word, the Holy Spirit will tell us that we are more than conquerors. The Holy Spirit will come and bring things back to our remembrance about what God done for us. That's why I am going with the first chapter. I mean, the eighth chapter, Paul starts off, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. After the spirit. Gee, you can't condemn me no longer. You can't, don't have victory over me no longer. You can not You can talk about me, yes, but that doesn't hurt me any longer. You can't tell me what I used to do. That doesn't bother me no more because I have victory because I'm in Christ Jesus. And when I'm in him, I, 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 I'm, I, I sought him so I can be baptized so I'm being led by the spirit of God. The spirit of God won't need, take you into sin. The spirit of God going to direct you away from sin. The Spirit of God will convict you of sin. The Spirit of God going to tell you that's wrong, don't do it. It's going to lead and guide you to truth so you don't get caught up in sin. Now, you can go over there and say, you want to do what you want to do? Yes, you can. That's what Amos was talking about. <laughs> they want to do what they want to do, God. They, they know that what's right and wrong, but they're choosing to do wrong. And when you choose to do wrong, then you face the judgment of God. When God done told you not to do it, and you say, well, I'm going, I, I, it's all right, feel God, I'm happy. I, God wants me to be happy. Uh, 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 he knows my heart. God God knows all of it. Yeah, he do. But he, can, he said he's going to judge the righteous and the unrighteous, the just and the unjust. But it's the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the comforter, the one that's going to make you victorious all the time. You can't lose with him. He's, he's going to get lead and guide you when you're being led by the Spirit. Now, look what Paul said right here. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, saints. Look what Paul said in verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm in the law of Christ now, in the, the spirit of life in Christ. So the law of sin and death, sin and death, has no rule over me no more. It's canceled out because I'm in Christ now. Sin don't hold no hold over me no more. Death don't hold no hold over me no more. I am victorious. I I'm separated from that. Where the punishment of sin is death, I, it's not no my punishment no more. My law, in, as in Christ Jesus, spirit, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, gives me life. Gives us life, freedom from that sin, freedom from that law, freedom from that. Amen. Oh my God, this Holy Spirit, the importance of the Holy Spirit, I'm trying to tell you. And we can't be on this for a couple of seconds. But what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. <clears throat> Jesus came in his flesh. Now, we know he didn't even commit no sin. But everything that's born in the flesh is sinful. We're all born in sin. We were all born because of Adam. We all fell from the grace of God. We uh, were born into sin. God sent his own son so that we could be redeemed so we won't be in sin any longer. So the Holy Spirit, when they, the Lord could not deliver, how many times they, how many pigeons we read in the Old Testament they killed? How many sacrifices they killed? How many... They could not deliver them from sin. They made all these uh, sacrifices. They made goats. <laughs> they had scapegoats. They had everything that uh, they had a sin, uh, uh, fire burning all times. But they could not deliver them from sin. It's going to take the you know, Jesus came to deliver us from him. That's why it's imperative that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 
then it opens the door for the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, that we can no longer be under the bondage of sin any longer. The wages of sin is what? Death. Jesus came, delivered us from that. We have life now. We have life now. Amen. Any questions so far? Any comments? Go ahead. You said, I know you said we're all born in sin. You know that. And you said Jesus came in his flesh. Although he came in his flesh, he still didn't have no sin. Right. Yeah. He he said, that's why I said he, the, he sent God sent his own son in the likeness, in the likeness, so we can identify with him, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. So in the likeness of, so we can say he was human, but he was the son of God at the same time. In the likeness, he condemned sin in the flesh. All right. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk what? Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Can you see how imperative the spirit will cause us to win? It will make us win so we can stand up we ain't got to say that word, Mr. Lang, because I hate to lose. Because I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner. Because I'm being led by the Spirit. So I don't know what, I'm a winner because God has enabled his Spirit to dwell on the inside of me. It's his Spirit, it's his Spirit. That's why we have to seek God for the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's so important. They don't stress that any longer. They tell you, get saved. Yeah, I'm saved from my sin. Okay, I got saved from my sin. Now, it doesn't stop there. You want power. Go go to Acts, the second chapter. Elder Wright, can you read the second chapter uh, of Acts for me? Yes, sir. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Hold on, Elder, hold on. Let me get to they not they're not there yet. They're not there yet. Chapter two of Book of Acts. Two one. Okay, Elder. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like under the fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when now when this was I'm sorry, now when this was Noah's abroad, the multitude came and gathered and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying, to one another, behold, are not all of these men speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and me. I'm sorry. That's good. That's good. Uh -huh. Did, did y'all understand that? Did y'all understand what's happening? Jesus told them going up a room. Jesus is going up scene. And we're talking about in Romans 8 chapter, we're talking about deliverance, right? And how is the spirit? Now I'm telling you how the spirit gives us power. If you want never don't like losing, you need power to win. So here Jesus told them, go to the upper room, stay there until they've been endured with power. The Holy Spirit brings power to our walk. The Holy Spirit brings power to our life. Yes, we have the word of God. But the Holy Spirit comes upon you and be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It gives you power to overcome all of these things in life. Where you, where you have peace, 
where you don't have peace. It's the Holy Spirit when you walk into chaos. The Holy Spirit will give you the power. It'll bring you back comfort. It'll tell you what to do and how to act in the midst of where you're at. It's the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit that leads it. They were in the upper room. They didn't know when it was happening. Jesus had left them. They'd been there 10 days. They said when the Pentecost fully come, 50 days, when 50 days had passed after Easter, the Passover, then that's when the day of Pentecost, they said day of Pentecost, that's when the room was filled. And the Holy Spirit came and sat upon each one of them. The Holy Spirit. They were there seeking, being obedient, seeking God for the Holy Spirit. Seeking God for the gift. They didn't know it was coming in the Holy Spirit. Jesus just told them it was come for the coming. You got to go stay there, though. Stay in Jerusalem. While they were there, being obedient, the Holy Spirit filled the room, and they were baptizing the Holy Spirit. Notice I said, filled the room. So they were submerged in there, filled the room, and sat upon each one of them. Filled the room. No room left. Hallelujah. So it goes back to it's going to be, you're going to be baptized. You're going to be in the spirit. In the spirit. Uh, it's imperative. Again, I keep saying that you have to seek the Holy Spirit because this world now has so many doctrines out here, so many things that borderline right, borderline wrong, that it's going to take the Holy Spirit to show you how and explain to you why it's wrong and why that's right. What is the meaning of the scripture? What is the meaning of what is God trying to tell me? It's the Holy Spirit that's going to open up the mysteries of God to make sure you... Follow the word of God the way God will want you to follow. Live the life that God wants you to live. It's the Holy Spirit that does all of that. you got to have the Holy Spirit saying, don't settle for I'm saved. Don't settle. Oh, I'm just saved. That's why people don't have no joy. It's boring life. Christianity is not a boring life. When you have the, the Spirit of God that's there and that he's giving you uh, I, I seen a commercial on TV a few minutes ago, and the man was saying uh, he didn't fail to get, he was trying to design a light bulb to light up. And he said he hadn't failed a thousand times. Hallelujah, I'm trying to get this light bulb to work. The thousand times he succeeded in knowing how not to make the light bulb work. That's how we have to look at, at, at in our life in Christ. We, we're happy as the Holy Spirit is telling you this, that, that's not how you do it. This is how you do it. And you get joy in learning. You turn the negative into a positive and you have peace. You have joy. Because the Holy Spirit is going to say, oh, <laughs> you worrying about, what you worrying about that for? What you worrying about that for? You, God already promised you that he's going to take care of. God already told you he's going to fight your battle. It's the Holy Spirit that reminds you of that. It's the Holy Spirit that says that you, you're healed. It'll bring it back to your remembrance. It, it's the Holy Spirit. And you need to read the Holy Spirit because you want to read his word. You want to study the word. You want to get into his word. And the Holy Spirit will open up this the understanding of the Bible. It's the Holy Spirit that does that. I can stand up here and, and read something to you and go over it and over and over it. But until the Holy Spirit gives you revelation or God opens up a revelation for you, you're just sitting here just going through it. Until you have that desire, we're just going through the motion. It's going to take the Holy Spirit. That's why I said you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Everybody, I, I didn't know the Holy Spirit. I don't tell you how many times I read this Bible. I could not get an understanding of this Bible. I could not. I read it and read it and read it. They said, start in this book and I read it and read it and read it. Still don't make any sense. Still did not make any sense. It's like it was, I was reading something that didn't, just reading words. Didn't make any sense to me. Not until I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and I started reading and seeking God. Then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
and everything became plain. Amen. So uh, there is a difference between field and baptism. Uh, Can I? Yes, go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, um, while you was talking, a song came across my mind uh, that I grew up singing in church was "He's All Over Me" and "He's Keeping Me Alive." I know that He's keeping me alive, and as you was talking. The Holy Spirit was revealing to me that when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's not just in you, but it's all around you too. The, the, the feeling is just on you. It's temporary. It's on you. But when you are baptized, it's not just in you, but it's all around you. And, and it's keeping you alive. It's what keeping you moving. It's what keeping you going. The, that The Holy Spirit brings life unto you i know we think we live in and yes we are but with the holy spirit it what brings the life it what brings the 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 revival to you it was bring the on uh, the understanding when you were saying that i read the bible over and over again but it wasn't until the holy spirit came that i actually got clarity and understand of what i was reading that's the purpose of the holy ghost that it revives you it keeps you it brings that life in you that God wants in you the 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 the, the deadness of, of, of us and we was in sinful the flesh it revived the spirit in us it just brings us life and brings us to the knowledge and the understanding of it that's the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit not just what we do I, I often say it's not just what we do on Sundays it want to be a part of our everyday life at, at work at, at school whatever you are doing they want to be a part of their everyday life and it gives you direction and understanding and it brings things to your knowledge of even when sometimes when I'm working on stuff that don't have nothing to do with a car or whatever, he'll give me some an idea of just do it this way, do it that way, or 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 don't use that. And it brings unto you the understanding. I'm and I'm gonna try to give it back to you. And and when you were talking about the winning side, you already have won. I, I know we say that we know maybe in the battle, but the battle has already won. When you have that side, when you have the Holy Spirit, we just go and do the battles because we have to go through certain battles. But we realize that we already won the battle because he is the one that is going to do it. He is just using us as a vessel to go through it. But it's the life source. When that song popped in my head, it's keeping me alive. It's the life source that's in us and not just in us, but it's all around us and is what's covering us and what's keeping us moving. Amen. Anybody else? It's Holy Spirit. Uh, verse 5. I, and, and, and look, look what the Paul wrote in the first verse. And, and many of us can find ourselves guilty with this. For they did uh, after the flesh do minor things of the flesh. For they that are, uh, for they that are after the flesh, I'm in Romans now, back in Romans, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I lost you. I give you time to find back Romans. Romans the eighth chapter. Should have told you to keep your finger there. Five. Eight and five. Yep. Eight and five. For they that, it says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. If you're after the flesh, you're going to be worried about what's going on in this world, right? You're going to mind the things of the flesh. <coughs> I just, I just call, <coughs> clearing my throat, right? You know what, what the first thing is? You get, you catching a cold. That fast that you told me, you catching a cold. That's, uh, if I can accept that, that's mine, what? Doing the fine things of the flesh. flesh. Well, I, and also at the same time, I got that call. There's something, this Holy Spirit, I, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. So I'm after the, I'm after the spiritual stuff. I'm on things after the spirit that can't have, be, uh, uh, have no hold over me. I'm mindful of the spiritual things 
this 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 this, this temple of the Holy Spirit. My God, hallelujah. I'm already healed. As the right said, we're healed. It's E D in the Bible. By his stripes, I'm healed already. Amen. I'm already victorious over these things. But when you're mindful of the flesh, you get, as my wife was saying out there, you, you get a traffic jam in your brain. Everything running through your mind. Everything running through your mind. You get confused about this. You get, uh, I got to go do this. I got to run here. I got to run there. I got that. I got this to do. This person saying that. That person saying this. Uh, this, this, this going on here. This. Everything is bothering you. You're mindful of the things that's going on in this world. When you're mindful of the things of the spirit, what's going to be going on in your mind? God. Victory. The word of God gives you peace. When you see that rise up, I pray. That's all you can do. You can't go over there and fix it, but you can pray. And what you pray, if you have prayed in faith and believe in God, and that God hears your prayer, it's already fixed. All things work to the good. All things. That's what it says. <laughs> Is that in this chapter we're reading? All right. All right, y'all. I, I don't want to get into it. We got to get so that we can't be mindful of these things that's going on around us. That should not be our focus. Our focus is being led by the Spirit, and the Spirit will guide you, and you have your mind for the things of the Spirit. Now, don't 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 get worse. <laughs> There's not a we we talking about spirits now. We not we not we we not, I don't want you, anybody to get confused about evil spirits and all this witchcraft and all that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the deity of God, the deity of God that God has given us, he will not override your will. The Holy Spirit will not override what you want to do. You do it, he tell you not to. You do it, you're on your own. So it's not like a, you're being possessed by some spirit. God offered this gift of the Holy Spirit to you. You can accept it or you can reject it. It is a gift of God to you, from God to you. A gift. You had the right to say, I'm not going to override and do whatever you want. But you can't blame God when you fall and something happens because you are mindful of the things of the flesh because you're walking after the flesh. If you're mindful of the things of the spirit, you're being led by the spirit. Now, the last verse I'm going to do tonight is verse 6. And I asked Elder Wright to uh, explain it. Verse 6. Maybe y'all hear somebody else say something. For to be caught in the mind is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Hmm. You can go ahead with 7. It goes along with it. Yeah, because the call of the mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. All right. So what this is saying to be in your own flesh, in your own desires, in your own mindset, you're going against God. When you're going against what God is saying, what God is doing, you're uh, in your own flesh for his death because you don't have any power and understanding of God. But to be spiritual minded, which is through the Holy Spirit, to give you understanding, that will bring peace and life. When I was saying it earlier, it gives you life. It gives you right. peace. It gives you the uh, revive in you. So if we, we are in our own self, we be in our own things, we'll fall. We will not, we mean the spirit, we are have life. Okay. I'm 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 you I'm with you. I'm just let, let me make sure they're getting caught quarter with you. They're, oh are they still turning? They're, they're, they're trying to get some understanding. Okay. See, so just bear with that. 
eight. We was, we was we we read, read eight, then we went to six and seven, and we're gonna end that with seven. Did you understand what Elder Wright just said? Anybody? Carlo is your normal mind. It's how you normally think. So when they say Carlo mind, it is how we normally think as a human, as a person. When how you process stuff on your own. That's that's the Carlo mind. When somebody does something to you and how you want to react to it instead of how God wants you to react to it through the spirit. So to be right. caught in the mind is you are working on your own thoughts and plans, and how you're going to fix the situation, how you're going to work it out, what you are planned to do and how you're going to handle it. But when we rely on the spirit of God, the spirit gives you understanding through, first of all, it says to bring our uh, life and peace. So when God's spirit is in you, your mindset is to bring life and peace. Everything God does, it, and it brings me back to what Bishop said our dean for faith trouble is to um, um, get, uh, uh, goodness throughout the all, all um, yeah. the, the, the world. I can't it slip my mind, but but the purpose of the Holy Spirit is when we are talking to people is always to bring life and peace. Right. Call the mind it. We always going to fight. It's my way, selfish. You did me wrong. I'm going to handle it this way. You hit me. I'm going to hit you back. Peaceful mind through the Holy Spirit was like, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to give it to God to handle it. Do, uh, I want to make sure y'all understand that. Y'all have that clarity. Got that? They're shaking their head. Okay. All right. <laughs> to be caught in the mind is enemy of God. Basically, it's against God. The way you think is against the way God thinks. It makes you a um, separate from God. It makes you uh, an enemy of God. Do you do understand that the way we think in our flesh, we going against what God is saying. So therefore, we are against God. I'm not saying that we try to beat God up in the day. I'm not talking about going warring in that sense. But I'm, I'm saying is that the way we think and the way we handle situations goes against what God does. And so that puts us against God. But God says, I want you to love your neighbor and you mad with your neighbor, you upset with your neighbor. When the Holy Spirit tells you to pray for somebody and we don't do that and how we want to do our own thing, that makes us a enemy against God because we are going against what God says. For it is not subject to the law, which you're talking about the law of, of God. Neither indeed can it be. It There's no way our thoughts and mindset can add up to what God wants. I don't care how hard we try, how hard we want to put our two cents into it, it will never be. Because it always will, you, your flesh and your mindset will always go against what God wants to do. So if we have the Holy Spirit, it will lead and guide you into all truth, which is the um, scripture that Bishop already brought up to it. That when the comfort will come, it will bring you there and it will give you understanding. And it will show you how to operate in his will. It's not going to force you, like Bishop said. It's not going to make you do it. It doesn't possess you. It gives you, it's a, it's a gift. And I was thinking that when Bishop was talking about earlier, all of us got Christmas gifts this year. And we do what we want um, with that gift. We use it if we want to use it. It's there. We got, we got, if we got perfume or cologne, we spray it on us. It, it, not, it didn't, it don't, none of the gifts that we got this year forced us to do it. It was there for us to be used and we could pick, well, I don't want to say pick and choose with the Holy Spirit, please don't take away, but it's a gift that's there to be used. It, it, it didn't force it on you. He's not going to force his stuff on you. It's, it's a gift to be used. And as long as we lined up with it, we read the directions and how to do it, that it was it's there to help us and to guide us and to bring us life. I say I can't see y'all faces. So yeah, yeah you, you, you good. Uh, and, I, and I'm putting it in, in read me a good example. Somebody did something to me before I got saved. And I wanted to be vindictive to get them back. Right? Because 
they took advantage of me, so I'm going to get them back. That's carnal mind. Follow me? Yes. That's that's what he's saying is enmity towards God, because God don't do it like that. God tell you, if you need, if he slap you, turn your cheek. God say, if he doesn't have a coat, give him a coat. That's God's way. Our way, I'm cold. Give me the coat. I'm going to keep my coat. I'll pray for you. That's my, that's how we do it. You have no intentions of helping. I pray for you that God send you send your coat. <laughs> but we're twisted. But cardinal mind is the way the world thinks. And spiritual mind is the way the way God speaks, thinks. We have to walk and be led by the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is on one way he's going to tell us to live, and that be spiritual mind. He's trying to get us out of cardinal mind. Godly. Cardinal mind. Okay. And wants us to be spiritual mind. So that's why it's important when Paul wrote that in here, to be cardinal mind is enmity. No born again Christian should be wanting to be in the cardinal mind any longer. They want to be spiritual minded. To be spiritual minded, you have to seek the Holy Spirit. You have to uh, be baptized in the Holy Spirit so that you can be spiritual minded. You won't lose when you get this Holy Spirit. Salvation is given to you, but there are many people that backslide. There's many people that give up, but then they learn. I told you a long time ago when I, I wanted to be saved a long time. I kept going to the altar. I kept going to the altar. I kept going to the altar and coming back, doing the same thing over and over. Didn't have nothing understanding of what was happening to me. Nobody explained it to me. Kept going, kept going. He me in the military. Went to the chapel. I wanted I wanted to be saved. I wanted to just okay. I did all the things, but I wasn't saved. There was no change in my life. I just kept going, and that Friday or that next week, that Sunday, Monday, when I get back, I did the same thing I did last Monday. There was no change. Not until, not until I learned about the Holy Spirit. Not until somebody opened up the scriptures to me about the Holy Spirit and the power that it gives you to overcome. And the only way I could get the Holy Spirit was seeking God, reading His Word. Studying his word, seeking God, turn, waiting for God, and to give me the whole baptize me in the Holy Spirit. It is imperative, saints, to get the Holy Spirit. We need it to walk this walk. We need it to live this life. Remember Amos. They were trying to they were going to kill Amos. They wanted to do away with Amos. Amos was lying. They told and Amos telling him false. He's lying. He's a false teacher. Amos said, I'm just a farmer, man. And God just used me to come here and tell you this. And people rejected. You got to have the Holy Spirit in the same time. We have to do the same thing. The people are rejecting us. People don't want to hear it. To be cardinal minded is enmity with God. You can't think cardinal minded and say, I'm serving God. You've got to be led by the Spirit. Then you'll be spiritual minded. It's, it's, a, it's a walk, saints. It takes time and it takes desire of your heart. You want to serve God. You know that God is real. And you want to do all you can to please God. God is real. And one thing, I'm going to tell you one thing I found out. The enemy don't want you to ever learn who you are and how much you mean to God. Because when you find out who you are and how much you mean to God, oh, you got, you got, you, and, and the only way you won't get that is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you revelation of who you are, how much power you have. I tell you, I said, tell you all this thing. Think about it. God that created the heavens and the earth has given you the gift of the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of you 
that you would be able to walk in this world as Jesus walked in this world. That's why the scripture says you can do greater, great, greater works than he did. Because you want to be, <laughs> you have the knowledge of who you were, who you are in God, and who God is in you. Because of the Holy Spirit. This is real. This is <laughs> power. <laughs> That's why you, 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 you say hold the rain. Rain ain't gonna rain here. Go around me. That's why you you you, 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 you turn back, stop this and stop that. Cause he he hears his son, he hears his daughter, and he got to he got to do it because he says, "I'll answer all your prayers." He's a faithful God, but the enemy never wants you to. Live. He wants you to live in fear. He wants you to look in the cardinal things. He wants you to look at and evaluate the world in, in your natural eyes instead of evaluating it in your spiritual eyes. When you evaluate in the spiritual eyes, sin going to be there. Sin going to be there. And you're not going to see the goodness of God. You're not going to see the, the, the righteousness, the, the, the holiness the, the, uh, of God. And you want to do it the old way you, way you, you think. My old way of thinking is totally different from how I think now. Totally different from how I think. And and, and I, 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 I I could be real mad at it by now. But I count it all joy. Amen. I'm give y'all a, a testimony uh, on the with our building a covering for my boat. The wind came, knocked it all down. All my labor, everything that I had done. Just the wind came, boom, it's all destroyed in a matter of seconds. Done deal. Now, I can get mad. So I forget it, get throw this shit, get disgusted and mad. But I didn't. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit had already talked to me. You know what the Holy Spirit said? You, you, you're going to cut it down anyway. You're going to drop lower it down. So now you get to go put it back up and put it at the right height. See, I found joy. It's God will give you peace in every situation. I was, I was figuring out how to modify to lower it down some. After it's already built. But peace of God said, knocked it down. Now I go back and I put it at the right height that it's supposed to be at. That's the peace of God. That's the spirit of God giving you comfort in the midst of a disaster. In the midst of a disaster, he, all right, it's down now. Now you put it back at the right height. See, find joy. Praise God. I ain't got to go up there and figure all that out. I just put it back up the right height that I wanted. That's God. That's the peace of God. That's the spirit of God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. One thing for sure. Yes, sir. You're right. Lord, Lord, for you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's nothing else we're going to ask. Elder Wright, you, you uh, close it out, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Father God, we thank you for this word, Father. We ask you to open our hearts even more, Father, as we go back and read and study this word, Father, that you place it in on Bishop Hart, Father, to us to seek the Holy Ghost, Father, and to get an understanding and clarity of what you want us to do, Father. We ask you right now, as we go forth on the rest of this week, Father, as you cover us and keep us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, through the storms and the winds and the rains, O oh God, and everything that's going in our lives, Father, we ask you to be right there, even the more, Father, that we'll hear you and, guide, uh, and be guided by you, Father, on this week, Father. We ask you to continue to touch the families, O oh God, to continue to touch them as they going through sicknesses and whatever's going on in our in our families' lives, God, we cover them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that salvation is coming because you said it, God, you spoke it over us right yes. now, Father, that you... Yeah, and touch everyone in oh God under some of voice, God. We ask you to touch, oh God, and strip oh God, Mr. Mancaster, Father. God, as he's coming, oh God, even the Bible study, God, we praise you and we bless you for it right now, Father, for your will. Oh God, in done, Father. We ask you to continue to bless 44 Turkey Trot Road, Father, as your hairs are protected around them, oh God, as you guide them and direct them, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.